in terms of shading them from the heat of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. This is category number two, a young man who grew up in the worship of Allah. Category number three, رَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ A man whose heart is hung in the masjid. Look at the prophetic description here. Whose heart is hung to the masjid, not his body, his heart. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, he says, كَأَنَّهُ شَبَّهَهُ بِالشَّيْءِ الْمُعَلَّقِ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ كَالْقِنْدِيلِ مَثَلًا إِشَارَةً إِلَى طُولِ الْمُلَازَمَةِ لَهُ بِقَلْبِهِ وَإِنْ كَانَ جَسَدُهُ خَارِجًا عَنْهُ He said the Prophet Sallallahu said that this person's heart was hung to the masjid as if it was a lantern or something like that to indicate just how long this person was in the masjid in terms of his heart even though his body was outside at times. Ah, alhamdulillah, so we understand that in order to earn this virtue, category number three, it doesn't mean that I need to be a full-time occupant of the masjid. I don't need to work in the masjid. I don't need to leave my work and my study to be in the masjid all of the time. No, this hadith is in reference to a person who harbors intense love for the house of Allah. He leaves the masjid after praying an obligatory prayer and his heart is yearning to come back. He feels like he has left his heart in the masjid. And every opportunity that comes back, he comes back to the masjid. But his body is outside sometimes, buying and selling and attending to the necessities of life. A man whose heart is attached to the masajid. And I tell you this, dear brothers and sisters, it is not late to amend your relationship with the house of Allah. Even if you were a person who would only visit the masjid once a week on a Friday, even if you are that person, there is still an opportunity to amend that relationship. Begin with Isha and Fajr to begin with. Two of the greatest salawat. And prayers that don't usually conflict with study or work at working hours. Begin with Isha and Fajr. And I promise you this. If you make that relationship and you amend it with the masjid, Allah Almighty will greet you with happiness. And the evidence for this is that which Ibn Khuzayma narrates in his Sahih on the authority of Abu Huraira that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَا مِنْ رَجُلٍ كَانَ يُوَطِّلُ الْمَسَاجِدِ فَشَغَلَهُ أَمْرٌ أَوْ عِلَّةٌ ثُمَّ عَادَ إِلَى مَا كَانَ إِلَّا تَبَشْبَشَ اللَّهُ لَهُ كَمَا يَتَبَشْبَشُ أَهْلُ الْغَائِبِ بِغَائِبِهِمْ إِذَا قَدِمْ he said, there isn't any person who used to always visit the masjid frequently, but then became busy because of a matter or illness, but then returned back to the masjid, except that Allah Almighty will greet such a person with happiness and excitement, the same way one of you greets his loved ones with happiness and excitement when they come back from journey. Ya salam. This is category number three, a person whose heart is attached to the houses of Allah. Category number four. رَجُلَانِ تَحَابَّ فِي اللَّهِ جِتَمَعَ عَلَيْهِ وَتَفَرَّقَ عَلَيْهِ Two men who loved each other purely for the sake of Allah. It wasn't necessarily business that brought them together. It wasn't necessarily a shared ethnicity or a common culture. It may not have been the same team that they both support. It was something else that brought them together. It was the love of Allah and the eagerness for the home of the hereafter that they sensed in one another. This is what drew them and attracted them to each other. Love that was for the sake of Allah. Thus Allah will reward them and Allah will bless them. And they will be ecstatic to hear their names being called out on the day of judgment as Imam Muslim narrates in his Sahih. That the Messenger Wasallam said that Allah Almighty will say on the day of judgment making an announcement أين المتحابون بِجَلَالِي أَلْيَوْمَ أُضِلُّهُمْ فِي ظِلِّي يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلِّي Where are those who used to love each other for my sake? Allah will say. Today I will shade them with my shade on a day when there will be no shade but mine. Find that individual whom you are sure you love only for the sake of Allah and hold on to him, hold on to her and await the announcement on the Day of Judgment. And tell that person that you love them for the sake of Allah, this is a sunnah that has been overlooked and neglected. If a person loves his brother, as the Messenger ﷺ says, as was narrated by Abi Dawood in his sunnah, and Imam Tirmidhi in his jami' on the authority of Al-Miqdad ibn Ma'ad Yakrib, 
If a person loves his brother, let him tell him he loves him. If a person loves his brother, tell him, I love you for the sake of Allah. This is category number four. Two people who loved each other purely for the sake of Allah. This is accessible. Alhamdulillah, this is accessible. And the shade of Allah is there. Category number five. رجل دعتهم رأة ذات منصب وجمال فقال إني أخاف الله A man who was seduced by a beautiful and a high ranking woman to do the haram with her and he walked away saying I fear Allah What type of piety, what type of strength, what type of imani fortitude must this individual have had to walk away from such a temptation which may have caused the vast majority of humanity to collapse at its doorstep. And thus Imam Al-Qurtubi would say about such an individual who was able to do this in his book Al-Mufhim, he would say, وَهَذَا هُوَ الْمَقَامُ الْيُوسُفِي This is the Yusufic station. This is the Yusufic station. The station of Yusuf. As he was offered a similar invitation and he walked away. I fear Allah. Al-Qurtubi says, this is the Yusufic station. Such an individual, despite having desires within him, within her, like everybody else, but realize that the shade of Allah Almighty is more precious than a short-lived moment of haram that will bring with it luggage of sadness and regret and pain. The slogan of such a young man the slogan of such a young woman was the ayah from the Quran that reads, Inni akhafu in asaytu rabbi adab yawmin azim. I fear that if I was to disobey my Lord, the punishment of a great day. That was their slogan. What type of person must this individual had been to put away such a desire? I fear Allah, a man who was invited. And seduced by a woman of high rank and beauty, he walks away saying, I fear Allah. I fear Allah. What about the sixth of the seven? He is a man who gives out a charity with so much privacy and secrecy that his left hand does not know what his right is giving in sadaqah. Despite the hands being very close to one another in their creation, and despite the hands usually working in collaboration with one another when we engage in tasks, Yet this person was so sincere and so secretive about his sadaqah that even his left hand had no idea what the right one was getting up to. Figurative speech, an analogy, this is an example. Allah says, إِن تُبْدُوا الصَّدَقَاتِ فَنِعِمَّا هِي وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا وَتُؤْتُوهَا الْفُقَرَاءَ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَيُكَافِرُ عَنْكُمْ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ If you disclose your charity, if you make it public, there is good in this. But if you hide it, Allah says, if you hide your sadaqah, and you give it to those who are poor, that is even better for you, and Allah will erase some of your sins through it. Allahu Akbar. There are certain exceptions to the rule. Yes, the rule is that secrecy and privacy when giving sadaqah and doing actions of worship. But there are certain exceptions, like an individual who is of influence, an imam of a masjid, a leader of a community, the leader of a household, and he knows that when he is going to give charity, people are going to follow, it is good for him to give it in public so that they may copy him. If however you know that your intention is going to play up and you are aware of yourself and I am certainly aware of mine, then such a person resorts to the default and that is giving sadaqah in privacy. And this, is, this is category number six. As for category number seven, and we will close with this, رَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَهُ A person who remembers Allah Almighty when he is alone and his eyes begin spilling with tears. Should we cry, dear brothers and sisters, in public, there may be room to doubt your intention. But when you shed those tears in utmost privacy where the only influence upon those tears was the remembrance of Allah, then the indications of sincerity are far more telling. Far more telling. The secret word here in this description was not tears. The secret word was khaliyan in privacy. We can cry in public. 
When we see others crying, we cry. Sometimes we are crying for the wrong reasons. But when you are alone, who can now doubt your intention? Train yourself, dear brothers and sisters, to put forward as many acts of ibadah in secrecy as you can. And if you feel that the majority of your actions of worship are in fact in public, and the ones you do in private are very small, you have to really revisit your intention and your relationship with Allah. Dear brothers and sisters, it is well known that if you were to bring a peg and you were to thrust it very deep into the soil, that peg will stand strong and no wind can blow it down even if that peg happens to be very skinny, very thin, but because it is down in the ground, it stands firm. However, if you were to bring a very big peg, a thick and wide peg, and you were just to dump it on the ground without pushing any of it in the soil, a child could push it over, despite its size. Why? Because none of that peg has secrets. No part of that peg is in darkness. All of that peg is out in the open, thus that peg is very weak. Why do I mention this? Because the worship of secret follows the exact same rule. The more you worship Allah Almighty behind closed doors, away from the eyes of your wife, your husband, your children, the deeper you are thrusting your peg within the soils of Iman. And thus when the winds of fitna and tribulation come to you, you stand strong because of the reserve you have prepared for yourself at night. And for this reason, and I will conclude with this, Ibn Asakir narrates in his tarikh that a man came to the companion Hudayf ibn al-Yaman, that companion who was given by the Prophet wasallam the names of all of the hypocrites in Medina. And the man, he says to Hudayf, Ya Hudayf, am I from the hypocrites? Was I listed from the Prophet wasallam as a person of nifaq? Hudayf did not give him a yes or no answer. He could have done, but he gave him a description. He said to him, Atusalli idha khalawt, wa tastaghfir idha adhnabt. Are you a person who prays when he is alone? And do you ask Allah to forgive you when you commit a sin? The man says, Yes, I do. Hudayfa then said to the man, Idhhab fama ja'alaka Allahu min al munafiqeen. Go, proceed. Because Allah has not made you one of the hypocrites. Notice what Hudayfa said to him, Do you pray when you are alone? Do you pray when you are alone? Thus, my dear brother, my dear sister, in conclusion, train, train to pray in secrecy, to fast in secrecy, to give sadaqah in secrecy, to think about the majesty of Allah, and then cry in secrecy. Rather than using these opportunities, these moments of privacy to commit a sin and to log on to something haram, see those moments of privacy as a golden opportunity to reserve for yourself a place within the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. actually loved this video um i'd love to believe that what i got from this to summarize everything is that it's talking about the commitment we have with god himself how's the commitment like are we doing um good deeds because we're doing it for the sake of God or are we doing them because we want people to see it? I love the example of the one where he talks about um, influencers. He didn't use that word but influencers. Uh, many times we see influ influencers being used in adverts, all sorts of campaigns to spread the word and to actually get people to do those maybe good deeds. Otherwise if you just uh, maybe giving charity but you're only giving charity because you want your neighbors to see you or the people around you to praise you, then you're doing it for the wrong things. Otherwise, good deeds should be done because you want to do it and because you believe so much in God that you want to please Him. You don't want to please anyone else in this world. You don't want to please your neighbors. You don't want to please your friends. You want to please God and only God Himself. Otherwise, there were some very, very big um, and good points given in this video. Let me know what you guys actually think. 
there's something else i wanted to touch on but i've forgotten but let me know what you guys think get that conversation started in the comment section below let's exchange knowledge let's learn from each other and let's enjoy everything otherwise if there's something that you guys want me to react to drop the link in the comment section below and i'll be more than glad to react to it make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video